Good morning, everyone, and attention, ladies. We have a series over the next couple of weeks and months that we really want you to pay attention to. It's a new series on bone health, and that is when Dr. Rodriguez, that's why we're happy to have him joining us this morning, because uh, there's a lot to dive into uh, on this subject. We're going to start this morning on kind of explaining what osteoporosis is, and I think when you look at the numbers, doctor, I think it's quite startling how many people right here in the Bay Area are struggling with osteoporosis. So it's a major problem here in the Bay Area. So Florida is a special state in many ways. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's about 44 uh, bone fractures a day. A day? In the Tampa Bay Area because of osteoporosis. So it is a major issue that we're facing here. Well, let's start here. How do you explain what osteoporosis is? What is it? So osteoporosis is a disorder of bone, the most common disorder of bone in humans. Okay. It's actually a disease. It's not a natural part of aging. Oh, it's uh, not. It See, not. I assumed it was. It is not. So uh, osteoporosis means porosis of bone or weak bone. So bones become weaker, which increases your risk of fracture. And it's these fractures that can lead to problems in our patients. So who is most at risk, do you think? Obviously, we uh, really want to get the message out to women this morning, but what age? So most postmenopausal women okay. are at, at major risk of, uh, of osteoporosis. After age of 50, after menopause, mm -hmm. as the estrogen levels decrease in the woman's body, the risk of osteoporosis increases. Mm. What are other risk factors? What do people need to watch or know as they're watching this morning on maybe some of those key risk factors? So there are multiple risk factors. They include age. As we get older, it gets worse, okay. the risk. Family history, if your parent had osteoporosis, if your parent suffered a hip fracture, for example, sedentary lifestyle, people who don't move around, mm -hmm. they have weak muscles, which can lead to weak bones, uh, poor intake of food, so low calcium, low vitamin D. Uh, there's data that shows that tobacco use mm -hmm. and, and also excessive alcohol use can lead to osteoporosis. So what's interesting is because I think maybe some people like myself assume it's just part of the natural aging process. When you even look at your family history, how do you know if in fact a family member had osteoporosis, how do you diagnose this? How do you know that you have it? So that's a great question. The, the problem is a lot of family members don't talk about exactly. their conditions. Exactly. So it is a problem that we see in clinic every day. But to diagnose it, there's a very easy test which is called the DEXA scan or the dual energy x-ray absorbentometer, long mm -hmm. word, which basically <laughs> it's like a form of an x-ray but with less radiation. Okay. And it measures the density of your bones. Okay. And we compared that density to that patient's same ethnicity. So if it's a white female, we'll compare it to a white female about the age of 40, which is a peak of bone health. Mm -hmm. So talk about, again, for people watching this morning, what is the main message? Because I think we were talking about those statistics in, in the Bay Area, and we really do want to get the word out on what people need to know, right? Those are alarming numbers. What can they do to, to hopefully maybe lower these injuries? So they need to recognize that they have the risk for the disease. Okay. They need to diagnose the disease. So it starts with a conversation with their primary care provider, their OBGYN physician, mm -hmm. uh, get a DEXA, uh, DEXA scan done, mm -hmm. get diagnosed. And I want patients to be cognizant of, of their bone density. Mm -hmm. uh, women are in touch with their bodies. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of talk about breast cancer, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. Women need to be aware of their breast cancer risk. Uh, but fractures are a major problem. So I want my patients to know, and all patients, mm -hmm. to know their T-score, what the results of their bone mineral density is on DEXA scan, just like they know what their cholesterol is. Is that something that scan, do you go back and check maybe six months later? Is it something that you keep checking on to see where it's at? Yes, we use it for diagnosis, but also for monitoring okay. uh, of the disease. So. It's covered by Medicare Part B, mm -hmm. and it'll be covered every two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that every two years so we can see if the patient's improving to treatment, if they're on treatment, or to diagnose. Uh, and also, it could be done more frequently in certain situations. Yeah. Two of the key things that I think are sticking out for me is talk to family members, see what your family history mm -hmm. is, and talk to your doctor about maybe what's going on. Anything else that you might add or, or really want to drive home this morning? Uh, those are my major mm -hmm. uh, driving points. Uh, just to open up the conversation. Yeah, and again, let's let's get those numbers lower. Thank you so much for spending some time with us uh, today. Me. Again, this is a series that we're starting on bone health that's gonna continue throughout the weeks and months ahead. We're gonna talk about fitness, we're gonna talk about nutrition, and uh, really dive into this. So we appreciate you helping us kick this off. We appreciate it. I'm happy to do it, thank you. Takechargeofosteo.com is the website where you can, of course, find out more information, but we will put that on our website as well.